Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News focusing on the search for MH370. I'm Geoffrey Thomas and delighted to say that we're joined once again by UK aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey, who has taken Whisper technology, worked with it, perfected it as a tracking tool for aircraft to find a new location for MH370. Welcome again, Richard. Thank you. Good morning and, from, and good afternoon to you. Yeah, good afternoon. <laughs> And perhaps you can take us through an update on Amada 7806, please. Sure. So Amada 7806 has now been almost a month in the MH370 uh, search area. It's still doing survey work in a, in a second uh, survey area. Um, yesterday we had... Uh, uh, yet another announcement from Malaysia that they're about to sign uh, an agreement with Ocean Infinity. Uh, there has been no confirmation from Ocean Infinity, however, that uh, this agreement is about to be signed. And I think this is now the sixth time we've heard from Malaysia that they're about to sign uh, an agreement. So at the moment, uh, my advice is... Uh, don't hold your breath uh, waiting for a signing ceremony to uh, actually happen. Um, Armada 7806 is still showing Cape Town as its next destination, um, but uh, it won't get there for, for 15 days. Uh, Armada 7806 has now been at sea for 14 days. Uh, 15 days to get to Cape Town means 29 days total and the total endurance is 35 days, so there are six days left uh, if uh, Cape Town still remains the destination uh, in the uh, the search area. We have yeah. another screenshot which um, shows you the survey area one and survey area two marked S1 and S2 in relation to the various hotspots. Um, S1 was uh, close to the IG hotspot. S2 is not that far away from the uh, Captain Blely, Jean-Luc Marchand uh, hotspot. And we uh, show you that there are more hotspots. There are actually two from UWA. There's the Whisper hotspots. And these go along the, the seventh arc and uh, all within a... A, a reasonable area um, in the Indian Ocean uh, and we expect Ocean Infinity to methodically complete their survey work and then methodically go through each of these uh, uh, hotspots. Mm. Indeed. Um, and one of the experts that we've been talking about and uh, talking about UWA is Professor Sharita Padarachi, um, who did some amazing modelling, drift modelling work um, at the beginning of, of the loss of MH370 back in 2014. Perhaps you can yeah. talk us through Chari, this. Yeah, Chari is a Professor of Coastal Oceanography at the University of Western Australia. And uh, in my mind, his collaboration with Blaine Gibson is uh, a perfect scientific story. What I mean by that is that Chari used his oceanographic models to predict where floating debris from MH370 would end up. And Blaine Gibson went to those locations and working together with locals, ended up finding around half of the 43 items that have meanwhile been handed in to the authorities. Can you sort of elaborate a bit more about Chari's collaboration with Blaine? Sure. Now, Chari tells the story how Blaine Gibson visited his uh, office and asked um, where he should look for MH370 floating debris washing up on, on some shore around the Indian Ocean. And Chari said, Madagascar. And Blaine back then had an ambition to visit every country in the world. And he said, but Chari, I've, I've already visited Madagascar 
Uh, are there other countries um, where the debris might be found? And it, Shari said, uh, have you been to Mozambique? Uh, Blaine says, no, then go to Mozambique. And, uh, and Shari specified a particular location near Vilanculos in Mo Mozambique. Uh, so Blaine went to Vilanculos and asked local fishermen, where does floating debris wash up? And they said, the Paluma Sandbank. Um, Belaine said, can you take me out there? Uh, and of course they could. And within a few days, Belaine had uh, found an item of debris. Uh, it was a, a piece mm. of the, the tail of uh, MH370. It had no step written on it. Now, no step is written on any wing or, or tail horizontal surface to show uh, people who are maintaining uh, an aircraft where they can step and where they uh, cannot uh, step. Mm. Was this debris from MH370 confirmed? Yes, um, the uh, part was, uh, that was found as a part of the horizontal stabilizer from the tail of a Boeing 777 and the stencil marking no step matched exactly the Malaysian Airlines uh, stencil, uh, which has a slightly different lettering from the Boeing uh, stencil. There was also a fastener with a, um, a part number on it, and these uh, fasteners were used um, uh, on this particular uh, aircraft, uh, which uh, was operating MH370. So uh, it's uh, nigh on uh, confirmed that this must have been from uh, from MH370. And since yeah. then, six other items of debris have been uh, found in Mozambique by Liam Lotter, Jean Viljeune, Barry McCade, and other tourists on, on beach holidays. You know, on a beach holiday, you go for a walk along the beach, and if you spot something interesting, you, you'll uh, you'll pick it up. Mm. So Blaine then went back to see Cherry and said, "Okay, I found something in uh, Mozambique. Where do I go next?" And Cherry said, "Madagascar." So Blaine went to Madagascar and ended up finding fifteen items of floating debris uh, to add to uh, the collection. So perhaps you can walk us through how Chari predicted where to find the floating debris, Richard. Yeah, it's um, uh, a very interesting science. Uh, Chari has a model of, of the Indian Ocean and uh, a model with uh, the environment, the winds, the tides, the river inflow, the surface heat flux. He has a model of the ocean response, uh, wind, waves, eddies, gyres, the vertical mixing in the layers of water, the depth dependent currents and the different densities there are. Uh, it's quite a complicated model. And then he has a model of the drift response. So the Stokes drift, the windage, the leeway, the leeway divergence, the advection, uh, that any floating debris item will ex experience. So it's, it's a complicated uh, ocean model. And then he has a drift model. Uh, and this combines the atmospheric model, the wave model, the ocean circulation model with a so-called particle model. So this uh, allows you to work out where an item of floating debris which is released at a certain time and a certain location will go and how long it will take to get to where it uh, gets uh, found on, on some beach. Mm. Uh, the ocean, like the atmosphere, is a very turbulent place, so they cannot be precise when they're working back to from a beach finding to a crash location but they can define uh, an area um, within which uh, the uh, MH370 uh, can be found. So this has helped significantly 
in the in the uh, search for MH370. Perhaps you can tell the viewers more about that. Yeah, imagine back in 2014, the initial search area was 1 million square kilometers, either side of the so-called seventh arc. Uh, the seventh arc, uh, just from 22, uh, 23 degrees south down to 39 or 40 degrees south, is 2,664 kilometers long. So the big question is where? along the seventh arc did MH370 uh, crash. And on the 29th of July, after 500 days at sea, a flaperon uh, washed up on Reunion Island. It was found by the beach cleaners who clean every day. And uh, so we know quite precisely which day this uh, flaperon beached in Reunion. And the leader of this group of uh, beach cleaners is a guy called Johnny Begg. And he immediately called the police uh, because he recognized what they had found. It was a piece of an aircraft. And the debris item was then shipped to France um, for an investigation. And the item was confirmed to be from MH370. Um, you, you could see the part numbers and the serial numbers uh, yeah. on this flacron. So what Cherry did was he divided the seventh arc into 25 different regions and using his particle filter and drift model, he set off 50,000 particles at each location starting on the 8th of March and then looked to see where they got to after 508 days. He tracked them every single day from all 25 locations, these 50,000 particles. So he needed a supercomputer uh, to do that. And uh, the Pawsey Computing Center um, uh, outside of Perth is uh, the, the center he used. And uh, they offered him time on their supercomputer. At the time, it was the most powerful supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere. And it's a it's a Cray uh, computer for those familiar with computer technology. And what he found was very interesting. North of 28.5 degrees south, the debris would have arrived far too early in Réunion, about three or four months uh, too early. South of 33 degrees south, the debris would not even get to Réunion in 508 days. So the crash location has to be between 28.5 degrees south and 33 uh, degrees uh, south. And uh, Chari has confirmed this, um, and he's written a paper and published it, um, and he's done several YouTube uh, videos uh, explaining uh, the work that uh, has been done at uh, University of Western Australia. And the interesting thing, he says, there's a, a preference uh, towards the southern end around 32.5 degrees south. This is close to um, Broken Ridge. But there is a second preference area around 29.75 degrees south. Now, the Whisper area, and we're showing you uh, these hot spots and, and the various... Uh, UWA uh, uh, areas and the Whisper area. Now, the UWA area has not been completely searched. Ocean Infinity searched the core of this area in the 2018, but not the full width of this area. And the Whisper hotspot is close to the 29.75 a degree south uh, preference area from uh, UWA and just outside the previous ocean infinity search area on the edge of the UWA area. So uh, I'm very uh, positive when I see A, the whisper area hasn't been searched before and B, that the UWA oceanography agrees uh, with the whisper area in, in uh, general terms.
Look, indeed, and uh, certainly an incredible body of work um, that has been done by uh, Professor uh, Padarachi uh, and the UWA folks. It's um, And yes, there are quite a few videos out there um, which uh, we'll have links to in the description below from uh, uh, UWA, if any of you wish to uh, delve further into that. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really fantastic at that northern spot. You've got a preference area for UWA within their broad zone, which we're showing, which is outlined in yellow. Then we've got the, uh, the seventh arc, which is the last transmission from the aircraft. And then there's the whisper hotspot. So it's, it's sort of like a really, um, it's, it's a real focus indeed. Yeah. Yep. And I would also mention um, Blaine uh, Gibson, who listened to what Cherry had to uh, say and the advice uh, Cherry uh, wanted to give him, and uh, quite uh, tirelessly uh, visited all these countries and found uh, many items and also promoted the knowledge uh, with locals to go and look. Yeah. And uh, a number of locals also uh, joined in and uh, uh, handed in items to Blaine or to the authorities. Uh, so it helps us enormously uh, building a picture uh, because this is real physical evidence. I know we, we have a bunch of electronic evidence on MH370, but this is real uh, physical evidence. It is indeed. And while we do mention Blaine, and you're absolutely right that he did galvanise locals to hand things in, uh, the, the 43 pieces of debris that have been found, in total, I think there's about 14 or 15 people that have actually found those, is it, or is it more? No, it, you're right. There are a few um, where the person who handed in didn't want to be named. Mm. Uh, but there are um, at least 15 named individuals from different countries and different locations in those countries. Um, and meanwhile, who, who didn't know each other at the time, mm. that have meanwhile um, you know, met up uh, and uh, exchanged their, their stories. Yes, and sort of almost forming a club. Um, yeah. Um, so, yes, quite look, an, that's all we've got. Uh, sorry, uh, Richard. I was going to say quite an elite cl club. Yes, it, indeed. They should, uh, they should get a T-shirt designed. Um, look, uh, thank you again for your uh, time and research, Richard. Fascinating stuff, uh, bringing to the viewer's attention the amazing work of UWA and Professor Adarachi and also Blaine Gibson. Um, viewers, thank you for listening to us. Um, please subscribe. Please like us. Please keep those fabulous comments coming. And the encouragement is really fantastic. We love it. And uh, do tune in tomorrow for another update on the search for MH370. Um, and thank you again, Richard. You're welcome.